Yo, can you hear me? Hey, I can. How are you? Hey, how you doing, bro? I'm well. Yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not too bad, man. Not too bad. Um, today's been uh, today's been uh, it's been a one which has been uh, tough. I don't really know how to say with everything that's going on, but uh, yeah, I'm just uh, just trying to make sense with things and just trying to take action as well. But it's been it's been a weird one, you know. Yeah. With what's going on stateside and you know. Of course, man. Of course. Yeah. Um, for me, it's it's been alright. Uh, today has been a bit bit low in terms of uh, activity. I've sort of been. Uh, I had to look after my nieces today, so um, whilst my uh, family were d- busy with work and stuff, so juggling that as well as juggling plans and stuff, you know, because you got to keep active in these times, man. Absolutely, and, and keep your mind fixed on something, you know. Hundred uh, percent. Um, yeah. I yeah. think just talking to you now is uh, the energy you've given off. It's incredible. And uh, I just want to say a massive, massive you, thank you. But um, before Anytime. we go into questions, I just want to give an introduction to people that are watching. Caleb is a multi, multi talented uh, <laughs> actor and musician. Um, studied at Lambda. Mm-hmm. Um, his theatre credits include. King Lear is a Royal Dern grade. Is that Royal Dern grade? That's right. Yep, that's correct. Uh, Tempest RSC. Yep. Lorax Old Vic. Yep. And then uh, I've got your TV credits. They're um, Counterpart. Mm-hmm. Stars in the long, yeah. the long song. Yeah, that's right. You got it. Uh, Death in Paradise now. Yeah, 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 my recent. Congrats on that. You're just absolutely killing Thank it. Thank you, man. And I'm incredibly, incredibly humbled and thankful for you to 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 impart your time and stuff. So, uh, anytime. Huge, huge thanks. So, yeah, I guess my first question is, how did you get started into this whole industry, this whole acting? What's you know? Tell me about your story, your early beginnings and stuff. Sure, I. Uh... The first, you know, moment when I realized that I wanted to do acting, I was eight years old. Um, and I shared to my, to my family at the time that I wanted to be an actor. And, uh, you know, parents being, you know, wise parents just trying to protect their kid was saying, <laughs> you, know, you, don't, <laughs> you don't want to be, uh, you know, from Africa, I'd be in background as well, you know, you don't want to be an actor. Acting is for dreamers, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so that, that led me on to, that made me sort of focus on other things as well, but it actually led me on to media studies. Mm-hmm. And actually um, the time when YouTube had just started to get, get going, I was making sketches on, online. And from there, it started to, to birth a real desire to act mm-hmm. as, um, yeah, just, just to act. Um, I also had the interest sort of like being behind the scene, but I think when it came to making choices about, you know, university and drama school and stuff like that, I realized that I actually really want to be in front of the camera than behind. So it, it took a period of, you know, like 10 years from eight to 18 till uh, for me to really decide that I wanted to do it full time. So the, so the YouTube videos, were they, in terms of that, was that just an outlet for your creativity? Was that to improve confidence? What, what made you get started in doing the, the, the YouTube content? Well, people were doing it. They were like playing different characters and um, editing and put it, putting it online. And then I saw this, um, the age I was in my teens, I was like, wait a minute, I want to do this. I want to try this out. So mm-hmm. I would be up hours around the house and just like filming different uh, sketches that I, that I wrote and then having to edit all the characters together. It was kind of like a bit of, um, you know, like Naughty Professor kind of thing, the kind of... Uh, comedy sort of thing playing all different characters oh okay so you're playing yeah. different characters as well yeah okay. yeah it was just ridiculous none of the videos are online i have them all sort of like tucked away uh, no, you send me that can you can you send me <laughs> can you send it my way no <laughs> <laughs> no way man that's that's a long time ago man yeah that, i'm giving that, my age away now that's that's incredible i mean that's you know 
I think you just doing it for the passion and to kind of playing these different characters, that's like an early foot in the door. So, so what yeah. followed after that then? Well, from then I went on to university um, after college at sixth form and I did drama then, but then also whilst I didn't get into drama school the first time I, I auditioned. Mm. So then I went on to university because, you know, family were like, you know, you should study, you should continue. But I always kept at the back of my mind that one day I do want to go to drama school. So I was uh, wise to, you know, save up for my training whilst I was studying so that I can eventually um, pay for my tuition. Mm. So I still kept at the back of my mind all, all the three years through university that one day I would, I would like to go to drama school. And you knew that drama school was for you, that's what you wanted to do? Yeah, it, because, well, it was the only inf information I had received. I didn't receive any other information saying that, you know, you could do it without drama school because so many people have. And I look back now, I sort of fixated on thinking, you know, this is the way that I should do it. But now there's multiple ways in which you can get into the business. So I would yeah. say whichever suits the individual. But for me, mm. uh, drama school was something that, that I felt that I needed to, you know, start to do. Mm. So tell me a bit about that. Tell me a bit about your experience at, at Lambda. Yeah, well, for me, it was sort of a... Man, where do you even start? This, I did the two-year course at Lambda. Mm. Basically, it's like the three-year course condensed into two years. Um, it was intense. It was intense. I just remember days just like you are exhausted, but you still have to stay till 9 p.m. Uh, for your training. But it, it just molds your body ready for, you know, for the industry and to work. You know, a lot of focus on theater, a lot of focus on the classical text, which I think starting out is is important so you know your history you know so you have a sense of working on like Chekhov and Shakespeare and stuff like that um but one thing I do I, I did appreciate about Lambda is that they have a very good uh, film department um whilst I was there so we also got introduction to film working on television and stuff like that um but it was just intense it was intense, but <laughs> worthwhile. That good, that good intense. That yeah, good. yeah, exactly. You know, you, you know what you're getting from it. You're getting your money's worth. Um, mm. You're getting a whole bunch of creativity. <clears throat> so it's a good, a good intense, yeah? Absolutely, good intense, yeah. And in terms of, that's weird that you say that because you're training, you got a lot of film expertise because most drama schools and I know my drama school, Drama Centre London, it was, it was heavily built in theatre, but in terms of like mm. the film stuff, it was quite limited. But it right. seems like, I remember seeing um, like a film clip that you did from Lambda and it was, oh, yeah. it was the lighting, there was the camera. So that's just incredible. They managed to, to cultivate that. How did you deal with that? Like doing film theatre at drama school? Well, they, the way they scheduled the um syllabus we we sort of did film and tv coming down to the end of the training because okay. um, obviously you know most people sometimes when they graduate they they book their first job is on set mm -hmm. so it was coming down to the end <clears throat> excuse me come down to the end of the first year we then sort of uh, divided the you know the the study time into film a film block mm -hmm. so it was just a lot of film and tv at the time so we'd just be doing different scripts we would have sessions with casting directors um preparing us for our short film because lambda had a you know they their graduates will have a short film so that they can leave with a showreel mm. you know so you can have you know your credits as well as um your theater credits as well with a showreel but it was just it was just an intense sort of period of doing film just to get us really seasoned with it you know and also understanding continuity mm. um you know and just just the the way film works really yeah I yeah. It's weird you say that because I, I feel like I could have done with a lot of that at my drama mm. school for when I'm directing projects, um, things like the continuity and stuff. But it's, I think that's, that's incredible. So talk to me about leaving drama school. You, you went straight into the theatre. Yes, yes, okay. I did. And was that, was that an active decision? Was it, the, was it, were you in a sense that, okay, I've left drama school, Mm. I want to do theatre, or I want to do film. What was, where was your mind at when you were leaving? Was it a choice that you, because I know that a lot of actors, they tend to, you know, 
do theatre first, you know, get that, mm. get their muscles working. Was that an active decision by you or just a, um, the situation that you found yourself in? It, it wasn't an active choice. For me, it was just where the work came. Mm. Um, the work started to come in theatre work. So I said, well, I might as well. I mean, I've just graduated. <laughs> yeah. if, if I'm getting work, then I might as well go where the work is. Um, so talk yeah, to me so about it was your, just, first, your first gig out of drama school. Sure. So I, one of my first projects was uh, I did the Caucasian Chalk Circle. Mm. Um, at uh, the Lion and Unicorn mm. Theatre, yes, in London Bridge. Um, it's a children's theatre, uh, so I did that, which is, you know, Brecht, very heavy play, long play. I swear um, that I came to that. Did I go to that? I, you I must have. Been, you must have. I remember seeing you afterwards and you dressed all slick. <laughs> hey, man, you know, know, I try. The best person I know. <laughs> thank you man thank you very much um but yeah i did, yeah, it, I do remember seeing that it's quite a big theater as well yeah it, it was a lovely space and the theater's quite at the time it was still quite new um and i worked with amy leach the director who was a great lovely lovely person to work with and real ensemble piece and i think it was great sort of going from drama school into that because having to you know, getting used to split, split, you know, split parts at school, you've got that sense of ensemble work already. So I was able to take those skills and put it, put it straight in. But it was fun. It was a lot of fun, you know, playing multiple characters and just bringing this play alive. Mm. And then yeah. after that, you started to build a CV within the theatre. Was that mm -hmm. just a continuation from this play that you'd just done? Or tell me Yeah, it was that. just... It was just continuing, you know, every show I did, I would make sure I write to casting directors um, to make sure that, you know, the next thing is hopefully I get, get into something next. But uh, I, I think it, it birthed a love for theatre. So I would, and my, one of my dreams was always to, you know, to work with the RSC. So, you know, when um, the following play, what, what came after Caucasian Chalk Circle? I think, I think it was the, the, the Lorax came after oh. Caucasian Chalk Circle. Um, and I love the old Vic as well, you know, knowing what it, the history of the old Vic as well. So that was such a big deal f for me, just being on that stage. Um, because I, I remember seeing, um, you know, Richard III in the theatre. Uh, that was my first play I saw at the old Vic. And it made me sort of realise, wow, I'd love to work at such a venue. So the work just started coming uh, one after the other as time went. Um, had a bit of gaps in between, you know, so I had to kind of keep yourself busy. Um, but yeah, it just one off the other. It just started to to flow. And what what would you say was one of your great lessons from working within that theatre kind of work, going on stage day in day out? What mm. what's the, what's a, what's a, what was the takeaway from that? I mean, I'm sure there's many, but if you can think of think of a takeaway from that, what would that be? Looking after yourself, preserving yourself, yeah. making sure your body is you know you got to take care of yourself because you can't be you can't, you need yourself to be able to keep on going for the other four weeks you have of the run, you know what I mean? Um, I think it was like a six week run or so, or something like that. It was around Christmas time as well. But yeah, looking after yourself, you really do need to because we are our instruments. So we, how can you go on if you know your body's not in the, in the best shape? So that was one sort of the main thing, which I still carry till now. I remember seeing you going up to Stratford upon Avon and mm. for people watching this the first time that i'd ever been there to the rsc and seeing kaylee oh, wow. you were you played ariel i i was understudying ariel yes at the time but then i also part of the rsc they give their understudies uh performance to uh get used to the show a live open performance um, to the public bro when i saw that i was just uh, and that how big that auditorium was um, and you filled that space and you did that role um the whole cast did but i was watching for you in particular you did that whole justice and it was just amazing to see to you you talk about keeping your instruments going and keeping those muscles going and i can tell that you certainly did that going to see you in that massive theater in Stratford upon Avon. I mean that's that was that's that's like a dream come true for a lot of actors. So thank you, man. It it it, it bless you. No, it it was. Um 
you know, because uh, being in the, the, the cast as well and seeing the guys do it every single night, you know, you, you do want to have your chance to, to be on that <laughs> stage, you know. Keep me going. Um, yeah, um, but it was uh, Greg Duran, who, who's the, who was the director at the time. Um, it was, uh, I just learned so much. I just enjoyed being there and the history of Stratford-upon-Avon as well. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just a place that just gave a lot of energy and I wanted to put that into the work. And I, I was so grateful for the role, so grateful because it was a real learning Real, there's an, almost a year, a year's contract. Um, so just learning, being at the RSC. Yeah, that's yeah. that's incredible. Um, yeah, I remember that. That was that was yeah. But so so talk to me. I'm gonna fast forward mm. a bit. Talk to me about this transition from theatre to TV. Sure. And how um, that came fin- about. No, go on. Finish. Yeah. Well, how that came about in terms of. Was was that always in the back of your head, or did you just want to keep going to theatre? At a certain point, whilst doing plays and stuff, I started to realise I, I I do want to make that crossover, but I really wasn't getting the opportunity to, you know, some of the auditions were coming through, but I really wasn't getting past the first stage. Mm-hmm. So I saw it was coming down to the end of. Um, sort of 2017 when I sort of sat down and I was really feeling led that it's time to make a drastic decision. Mm. So I told my team at the time um, that I'm going to take a break from theater so I can put my energies into working on film. Mm. And it was a bold decision because you're basically saying, I mean, it was, it was, I say bold in a sense that, I didn't know the you outcome. You turn down work. Yeah, which, yeah, certain things I've had to say no to because, you know, I said, I'm in this, you have one life to live. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I was really believing, having faith that I could, you know, make that transition. So I basically said to my team, listen, um, I'm going to be taking a break from theater. I really hope you guys support me on this, um, which they did at the time. Um, but I just want to see what happens if I just sort of put my energies solely on pursuing film and television. Mm. And as a result, thank God, things that things started to happen in the film and TV uh, realm. But I think the biggest lesson for me from that was just taking that step of faith because I don't know where, if I would have the TV credits now, if I had taken that step then. To have that to be yeah yeah exactly that conversation that was a conversation with yourself and that was a conversation with your team yeah myself first really sort of to say you know i think it's time now and then after then talking to my team and saying you know i, I think it's time that i um they were supportive they were like i'm still going to be forwarding still going to be forwarding you for you know stage stuff mm-hmm. but uh but I, we respect your decision. And I think it's really, really important to have a team that you can really bounce off of and really work together and that will be willing to hear you out because at the end of the day, it's a collaborative experience. It's, we're working together, you know, to build whatever the vision is. Well, that's, that's really important you say that collaboration. Mm. From your early beginnings, uh, from drama school, university, doing theatre, doing television, doing films, it's collaboration is key. Um, and it's, I think that's, that's really, really important thing that you, that you said that's just really, it's really hit me because, you know, you need to trust yourself, but you also need to trust the other people around you. So, yeah, yeah. I, I see that you did that and, and, it, and it did pay off. Um, so talk to me about your first television role. Yeah, so my first uh, role was on uh, Into the Badlands, which is a, a show on AMC, um, which also plays on, on Amazon. That was my first introduction to just just a bit part, had a little bit part, few lines in the scene, um, which was a great experience, just being on that set. It was just, I f- literally, I felt like I was like six or seven, just just in awe of the whole process, um, just being there, um, just looking at these guys, you know, the, the regulars do their thing 
and then you come in and do your little one bit and my session was right at the end of the working week so you know no time so quick in there get it done out um but it was just it was just a wonderful experience just to be on set uh yeah it i still remember it to this day it's just a dream come true really mm. and then with that did that get the juices going how did that make you feel in, uh, to transition to the next role how did how, how, how did you feel about that yeah it it sort of made me yeah just want to do more so um and following that it took a few months before the next project which was um i did a short film actually in between um called uh wow i've forgotten it i can't remember the name because i changed the name of the film um but yeah so then i did a short film in between and then i went on to um counterpart so it was sort of things were sort of back to back for a little bit Is that the film uh, London project yes that's right i can't can't remember the name of it right now um which is really embarrassing i should check but um i can but yeah check for you keep yeah, yeah keep going man keep going yeah so so basically following from that first that first credit it was into it was into um that short film and then from that short film went on to counterpart and then a, f a few months after the counterpart I, I booked uh, the long song as well so it was a period of screen projects just flowing one you know to, to the next mm. i've got um, short crossings but, here is that what they change the that's it that's it that's the yeah, film i remember that i remember you showed me that that's a brilliant short film yeah thank you man it was a oh they were such a wonderful team um really really great great guys i worked with them and they all do the individual um their individual stuff but they came together on this and i would love to work with them again they were really cool so you were saying sorry sorry to interrupt you were saying about after after you took after you i just want to say something you said it took a few months in between that period of mm -hmm. going from one tv to the role to the other so i think it's really 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 important for the people watching this um mm. one thing that i noticed with you from coming to visit you yeah um you've set up your own kind of self tape studio oh, uh, yes. <laughs> i've noticed that you're very meticulous and you're very um very very focused on the craft you don't leave anything to chance you're you're just that hard worker um i like to call those people cleaners that you've got closers and then you've got okay. cleaners but I think you really are a cleaner and I think it's really important for the people to w watching to know that it's not by, I don't think it's by who your agent is or luck. I think it's purely through, I would say obviously the grace of God, but I think it's a lot to do with your hard work, testament to who you are, the kind of the work you put in. So you do put in a lot of work you you won't admit it but i think you put in that ridiculous hard work so yeah i just wanted to say that i think it's important for people watching this interview to know that because you know there's a lot of we've got the social media generation we've got this and that but i think when it comes down to it it's you just have to do the work i think i think you're absolutely right and and i absolutely will will reiterate that by the grace of god uh, i've been blessed with the opportunities that i have and uh, even recently, I was sort of saying to myself, I, you have to take the time to be thankful for the opportunities you get, no matter how small they are, because you cannot see 10, 10 years down the line what you are building. You may have a sense of the vision, but you don't know the actual steps, you know. So you, so you have to be, um, you got to have faith. you got to be thankful and um, for every blessing that you receive. Um, 100%. Yeah. 100, 100%. Yeah. Um, yeah, I couldn't agree. <clears throat> so yeah, talk to me about your next TV role after um, Into the Badlands. Sure. So my the so I did, uh, the next TV role was uh, I played um, a protege of J.K. Simmons um, in in the series Counterparts. So basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that scene, I am going to put that uh, on the socials because I oh, need, I, <laughs> I need people to see. Um, that scene that when i saw that scene i just went crazy i was like screaming saying, yes, <laughs> that guy i mean jk is a legendary actor he's incredible he's incredible uh, incredible actor did he do theater i didn't know i don't know did he do theater he did the things about jk simmons he 
he started very late in the business. I mean, he did theater up until he was in his 40s oh, wow. and then began to transition into television and film. Wow. Um, and you might think he's been in screen and stuff for a long time, but he actually did a lot of touring shows. But I started just to do a bit of research, but he did a lot of touring shows at the time. And then later on... That, that voice, you can tell that presence. He has a great like, voice. You know. Yeah. You held your own, um, that's the thing. You uh... yeah, <laughs> When I saw you hey. up against him, I was like, it's gonna be whiplash again, like. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's such a great film as well. Such a really good film. Um, but he's he's incredible, and I think the way he carried it was it was just interesting to see how a number one on the on the call sheet carries themselves. It's just really interesting to see how you know they work that relationship and how the the crew and the cast you know, give them their space that they need. Um, but he, he wasn't any sort of a, you know, diva or anything on set. He was a genuinely a nice guy. You know, when I first met him, he was like, hey, you know, how are you doing and everything? Um, and yeah, it was just great. Just did the scene and then moved on to the next, to the next location after that first introduction. But that was the first scene I did with, with on the job, the one that you, you might In be In the showing. cafe? Yeah, that was the first, yeah. But you yes. prepped for that, so was there a degree of nervousness or he was just like, this just another day on the job? Uh, well, there was a bit of nerves at first, you know, just thinking, my goodness me, you know, I want to do a good job. But uh, the prep was just, I just did my usual, you know, my preparation for the scene, but the most important, I just really wanted to make sure I knew my, my lines really well. <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to know my lines really well. And just because... But the thing is, you have to know them so well because one thing I learned from transitioning from theatre into film, mm. there isn't much time to waste on on set because a minute is is money, um, you know. So um, I really wanted to have them so so down that I didn't even need to think about it. It could just be second nature. Um, the lines would just flow. Um, which I spent a lot of time in advance, and I'm really glad I did because the nerves were there, you know, the first first kind of scene. Um, but yeah, I just prepared pre uh, prepared um, by looking at looking at the show, um, the first season. You, I mean, you absolutely smashed that that scene. Thank you, man. Uh, Bless you. And the other scenes within that, um, and that's, I mean, that's no mean feat to go straight into a scene with J.K. Simmons, you know. That's, <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, yeah, um, incredible. So after Counterpart, was that in the long song? Uh, yes, it was. I went and did um, the long song, uh, which was shot in um, Dominican Republic. So it was lovely to, to be out in the Caribbean and um, experience shooting and out there. And the story as well, a beautiful, beautiful story. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, Andrea Levy. Um, rest in peace. She she wrote such a wonderful a wonderful um, the novel you know the book itself and then the screenwriter who adapted it um, yeah just sort of took the the essence of the book as well and put it made it for screen and it was just it was just great to be a part of something like that because I think it's nice to see I think at that time I think a lot of people were really hoping for the BBC to be a bit more diverse with some of the shows and I think it was really great to. For me, it was just an honor just to be a part of the story. Yeah, man, that's incredible. And you did um, Death in Paradise, which was screened this year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, exactly. Which which aired yeah earlier this year. Um, that was in Guadeloupe, shot in Guadeloupe. Racking um, up those air miles. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's that was just the Caribbean is a lovely place. Um, I'm from the Caribbean as well, so Trinidad. Um, but it's just lovely to to be out there. But that was a that was a wonderful experience as well. Just on a show that has been running for so many years, um, just to just to be a part of it, really. Oh man, yeah. incredible! So, I guess my next question is: What would you say is the most challenging thing you've had to deal with so far in your career? It could be anything. Um, yeah, what would you say was the was the most challenging thing? And how did you deal with that as well? I think that's important to say. Sure. I think I think as I got more into the, the the screen work, you know, I found I had to build up my um, 
resistance to the rejection a little bit more, mm-hmm. you know, still coming out of school, still fresh and stuff. Um, I think I'm at the point now where, you know, you do the tape, you send the tape off and you may not hear anything about, you know, about it. So I think that at first took some time to build up that resistance just to, you know, do the tape, see, almost see the tape as the job. And if you hear anything afterwards, then that's, you know, that's a blessing, you know, but uh, it was, I think it was just building my, my resistance up, you know, to, to not hearing anything mm-hmm. or, you know, the nose as well. I think that's a challenge that everyone needs to, at some point, uh, mm-hmm. embrace or, or, you know, be able that hurdle you need to cross. So it's almost do the work and then just, le- and then just leave it, let it go out. Yeah. Yeah. And if you hear back, then great. Um, I think I learned some of that just from um, listening to Michael B. Jordan. He, he as well would say some of his interviews, he was saying, you know, like I, I do the audition and you put the script in the bin, like when he walked out of the, 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 the audition and that, that's, that's the job done, you know, and if you hear anything, then, you know, just print it off again. But I think the idea of sort of doing the work as best as you can and then sort of just moving on to the next thing. Otherwise, and I've shared this with some friends as well, because sometimes you're so waiting to hear that, you know, you sort of lose your, your faith and you kind of get discouraged about, you know, the yourself, you know? So sometimes it's really good just to do it, forget about it. And if you hear something great, that's a, that's a, you know, good news, mm-hmm. you know, but, yeah, um, uh, this movement teacher, she's still going, she's incredible. Um, mm. Her name's called Liana and she always, she okay. used to say, I think she might have did some lessons at Lambda as well, like, but she's still going. She's been doing it for many a year. And she always used to say, mm. leave yourself alone. And when wow. she first said that, I never really understood that. I was like, well, leave myself alone? I, mm. I've got to check myself. I've got to check within myself and see, you know, where I'm going wrong, what are my flaws, da 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 But I think what she meant in terms of leave yourself alone is that, you know, you ha- at, at some point you have to, just be and then let that flow into the world. So like you're saying with doing the self tapes, you've got to do that work, apply yourself Mm. by all means prep and then just leave yourself alone with it. Don't allow it to, don't get too much or don't get within your head. Don't get inside your head, just leave yourself alone. And uh, when you said that, it made me think about that. Sound advice, really sound advice. Um, Yeah, she's right. I think she's right. So, Definitely. speaking about advice, what advice yeah. would you give to, I mean, an actor? And it, I, don't like this, I don't like this word aspiring actor. I always believe that when you're an actor, you're an actor and you mm. have to do everything. You know, this is just with me with my filmmakers hat on. When I'm auditioning actors, I feel like you're not an aspiring actor, you're an actor. You just have to you have to do everything that comes with that which is the work um, um, but what advice would you give to to an actor um i know that's 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 quite a, a vague question so you can position that in any way that you want sure sean i i would say and there's something i even sort of i still believe in now it's you don't necessarily need to be on the job to act. Mm. You, do not, you don't need to have a contract to act. You know, you can act at any time at home. You can, you know, you don't have to wait for the job to begin brushing up your skills. Mm. And I think it's really important that the preparation before causes you to be ready for when the opportunity comes so even even myself i say to my i'm saying this to myself as well as there's a reminder as well you know you've got to even on the down day the days that you're not too busy you still got to keep yourself fresh because you don't know when that next opportunity your your big opportunity may come and i think preparation meets opportunity is is really important what i say the advice i would give is you know you can watch films you can find the scripts online. You can work on some of the scenes. You can film the scenes. You can get a group of your, of your friends together and, and start to work on the scenes and give each other feedback. Um, you know, I, uh, 
like Letitia um, Wright, I often remember hearing her. She would she would say that I used to film myself doing all the scenes and stuff that I would watch, and I would redo them and you know try to get better. And you know, look at where she is now. And yeah. you know, hard work is really important. But something I would say is definitely take the time to work on yourself. You know, before before the gig, before the job, because it's that preparation in itself that actually gets you to that position. Right. Sound, sound advice, man. Honestly. Um, yeah, just uh, that is. Thank you. Thank you so much, Caleb, for your time. Bless you, man. Anytime, anytime. Bro, it's been I, great. I really appreciate you just giving that energy. You've, you've definitely lifted my spirits today. Um, and I'm sure the many, many people watching, I just, I just want to say a huge, huge thank you. I think in terms of your career, for me personally, I feel like your career is just taking off and just getting started. I, I'm, so, I'm so excited um, to see, see where this goes. Uh, when, I, when I give you the call, uh, <laughs> <laughs> be easy on the discount, man. Be easy on the discount. <laughs> but yeah, like it's um, uh, an absolute pleasure, man. Um, thank you. Thank I'm, you. I, yeah, you just, you're such an inspiration. Um, bless you, bless you, brother. So what, what are you up to for the rest of the day anyway? Uh, today, what I'm going to do, I'm going to chill, I'm going to have some dinner mm. and rest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just rest. <laughs> Love it, that's it. Yeah, man, I'm that's being it. honest, you know, Frank, uh, but tomorrow, just going to, just, just kind of keep with the planning, um, and just kind of keep things going, really. Okay, man. All yeah. right, man. Well, bro, man, again, a huge, huge thank you. Uh, Anna, thank you. Yeah, man. Have, 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 have a lovely day, bro. You too. You too. Thanks a lot, Anthony. Anytime, man. I'll catch you soon, All right. yeah? All right. Take care. All right.